that says something about a person. You know, I mean, to an extent. But that, again, that doesn't really mean that that the information they're conveying is incorrect. You know, it might be an indication that it is, but you still need to double check the information. You should not dismiss it because it's not presented the way that you think it should be. You know? So, something to keep in mind as far as that. Uh, and, as I was saying earlier, again, uh, the, the same with opposite. Just because it looks all official and authoritative and someone has uh, credentials before or after their name doesn't mean it's, it's any more true. It doesn't make it even a little bit more true. And uh, it doesn't matter what kind of information you're coming into contact with, you still need to not take someone's authority or lack of authority for granted. You need to check the information. You know, it's not about appearances, it's about content. What is the content? That's what matters in life. It's, you know, not how things look, but how things are. And uh, it, it, it's a heavy subject getting into really seeing reality as it is. And there's a lot I can say about it, but... And, and I, you know, I apologize for getting getting into kind of heavier subjects and then backing away from them but I, I really just want to give the a, a more straightforward breakdown of this for the beginning since this is you know just about grammar <laughs> supposedly you know uh, grammar makes up uh, such a big part of our our uh, our take on on the world it really composes um, how we think how we speak how we uh, interact with one another and uh, there is quite a lot to take in uh, when it comes to thinking about what grammar really means and what it's really about it's a, definitely a, an important vital tool for uh, for the path of knowledge for making your mind as lucid and as uh, making your willpower as, as uh, strong as it can be. You know, your mind is an extremely, extremely powerful tool, but you have to, you have to really focus and, and, and learn to do so, to really be able to harness that power. So, Um, I'm looking here at the link that is uh, proper online research, how proper online research works. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, number one is decide if the topic is hard research, soft research, or both. And I mean, that's, that's again a little fallacious. It is important. It depends upon uh, how official... You know, this is sort of written from the perspective of someone who's writing a paper, uh, you know, an actual research paper where you're supposed to only use certain kinds of uh, reference references. And um, so, I mean, that's something to consider, certainly. Uh, again, it's kind of fallacious, though, because just because something is soft research doesn't mean it's not true. Just because something's hard research doesn't make it true. So, it all comes down to the same thing again. You have to break the information down, <clears throat> check their terminology, check their sources, evaluate the information itself, <clears throat> use your logic to remove contradictions, and consider. Uh, so, number two is... 
this is really what I was referring to earlier. Choose which online authorities are suitable for your research topic. You know, don't think about it. Don't don't evaluate information. Just which which authority should I just quote as being true, you know? And uh I mean they they get into a little more nuance with it than that, but I mean it, the the bias towards authority is, is clear in here that you know academic journals, government publications, government authorities, uh, science and medical content, non government websites that are not influenced by advertising and obvious sponsorship. See, but they only say that for non government websites. They don't. I mean. Our government is pretty much run by lobbies, lobby groups, which are exactly advertising and sponsorship. That's what lobby groups are. But they don't mention that for government sites at all. No, that's all just unbiased, clearly authoritarian information there, yeah. And same with scientific and medical content, you know. Like I was saying earlier, you know, most, most scientists, most academicians... They, they work for people. They're, they work for the people who pay for their research grants. And in many cases, those people want a particular bias to be reported. And if the scientist tries to disregard that and, and, and report facts, you know, they face a lot of repercussions. They won't get their paper published. They won't get further research funding, you know. So I mean, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, you really gotta, you really gotta consider, evaluate, analyze, reflect. And then the the sixth one here is archive news. You know, and and again, it doesn't say anything about advertising and obvious sponsorship there. You know, which uh, uh, the media, the media. <laughs> There, there's all kinds of bias out there and all sorts of uh, advertising and sponsorship that goes on in, in, in uh, mainstream news but also in alternative media. There's, there's, there's all kinds of alternative media these days. It's Just because something isn't lamestream media doesn't mean it's accurate either. You really, it's the same process no matter what you're dealing with. That's why this is Trivia method is it's vital because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your source is. You still have to consider your source. All right, so number three here is uh, using search engines and keywords. And this is really important. Uh, really, uh, you can, if you if you just vary one word, in, in a phrase, uh, if you're searching for something, you can get very uh, different results based on it. And uh, also true for using the same words on different search engines. Uh, especially nowadays because they have these optimized personal searches for people because they know better than you what you want to find. So they... they <laughs> You, you can sometimes do better uh, going to a search engine you don't usually use. You know, if you use Google, then go try Bing or if, you know, or any of the other. There's homepage.com. There's, you know, all sorts of different, different search engines you can use. Uh, so sometimes you're better off using one you don't normally use because it won't restrict your, your field so much so you can get a broader spectrum of of a particular topic and then uh, you can go through and use certain terms as you learn about the subject you know just type in whatever you want to type in for a subject a, a name or you know an event or a, a place or anything like that and um, it'll start to tell you um, you know, it'll give you a, a, a sort of more typical take on that subject. You know, it'll give you, usually it gives you like a, 
the main sites that are visited, the most popular sites uh, for for whatever you're looking for, and then you can go through that and you can get uh, keywords out of that, <clears throat> you know, and and that gets back to note taking where you uh, just uh, look for particular. Um, I don't want to say buzzwords, but I mean they can definitely be handy. Uh, but just get into you know particular terminology with a with a particular topic, you know, uh, names and dates and places and all that. Uh, and uh, yeah, using. Using specific terminology is important for uh, finding a lot of things. And then uh, number four is uh, bookmark and stockpile possible good content. And that's basically what I'm saying too is, is um, I, I take notes on a physical book but then I, I also use digital. And one of the advantages to digital note taking is that you can just copy and paste links and copy and paste page content into there. And then you can, you know, just reference it really quickly and you can click the link and just go back to that site later on. So that's really important. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't do um, mobile phones. I don't do that. I mean, I have a cell phone, but I, it doesn't have internet on it. I just call people on it. It's a really crazy idea. It's called using a phone as a phone. So, yeah, uh, I was really resist resistant to uh, cell phones in the first damn place back in the 90s. And uh, I, I'm, uh, I don't plan on getting a dumb phone anytime soon. So, so I, I, I have a computer. So, you know, I carry a notebook around when I want to write things down in a notebook. And I don't. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. But, you know, if all you have is your, your, your phone, then, you know, take notes on that. But whatever you want to do. It's just, uh, that's how I do it. So, anyways. Uh, number five kind of gets more into logic than grammar, which is filter and validate the content. It's certainly important. Um, and this is, again, getting into confirmation bias again. Uh, uh, be suspicious of personal web pages and any commercial pages that have a shoddy amateurish presentation, you know, because that, that really, that, you know, if they don't present it right, then it isn't true, you know. <laughs> uh, I already went off on that enough, so I'm just gonna, pretty much this whole, whole part here, I'm just gonna skip over it, because I've talked about that plenty. Um, and then, again, six and seven are both pretty much the logic phase, so I'm not going to get into that too much. That'll be the next lecture. Logic, that's going to be a fun one. <laughs> uh, I kind of already touched on uh, a good portion of it, talking about objectivity and subjectivity, because that's a real big big part of uh, false logic is, is blurring those lines so that you, you don't understand what an objective fact is. Because once you do that, once you can establish that an objective fact is in fact an objective fact, <laughs> then it, it all rather simplifies itself. But that whole process of how you do that has is, is gotten rather convoluted and, and foolish in my humble opinion. <laughs> uh, so anyways. Uh, so this other website, the research process. Um, it basically is just the same thing. Um, there's just some good guidelines here. Um, and it gets more into like citations, how to, how to cite and how to brainstorm and uh, tips to consider and, and things like that so I thought you'd find this useful and it also has a <coughs> hard copy stuff for going to an actual library and looking at encyclopedias and stuff uh, how to do that how to cite information you know how to do it the legit uh, academic way of, of citing information 
So, alright, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, go ahead and look at this information I have on the curriculum, and uh, I'll see you next time.